So um, I think everybody in this group knows the basic two defining concepts of humans in Torah, uh, which is the basis for the story of Noah. Um, and the first is that we are made on one hand of the dust of the earth in bodies that have needs of all kinds, uh, both needs and fears, craving and fear. Um, and we're also given life by the breath blown into us of the divine. And so there is this spark of, um, there are different ways of putting it, but in some way we are also in some way in the image of God or have sparks of God with whatever manifestations of God. It's all through Judaism in different ways. So we have two, two aspects to our nature, a lower and a higher, basically. Um, and the other fundamental statement of Torah is that it's up to us as human beings to choose which direction we go again and again. And there are so many precepts and commandments in Torah telling us precisely more or less what we should be doing. So in that context, so all of Torah is about this struggle within us and making choices. And the Torah has already begun in the first section in Genesis, of Genesis Prashit with Cain killing Abel out of jealousy. So here we are. And the parsha ends with a statement that um, all the world is filled with violence. And so um, in the language of Torah, God chooses to destroy everyone but Noah and his family. Um, in our own understanding, it is more in the direction of behavior has consequences. And as you know, I am pretty obsessed with the state of um, the planet. <laughs> and we're living in the midst of one of the great extinctions of all time. So because of what we've done to the planet and are doing now. But I'm not going there today. Noah is about catastrophe in general. Um, it's a metaphor, the ark, for times of upheaval and turmoil in a world torn by violence, such as ours is today. And it should be read and can be read as an instruction for what to do internally and in our behavior, both to cope with the turmoil and to make a possibility for change by what we do with ourselves. The word noach comes from the Hebrew word console, while the consonants also take us to the Hebrew word for rest. In the story, Noah is told to build an ark that is simply a rudderless box, three stories high with a window on top that faces the heavens. So Noah is held in this ark in a place of safety, a time out as the seas erupt around him and drown the earth. He is helpless to prevent what is happening. At the same time, in this time out, he is safe. Okay, he's not engaged in what is happening. So many of the commentaries on the metaphoric meaning of the three levels during this time out place the animals at the bottom level and humans in the middle and the window faces God, whatever we mean by that, and the heavens. So in my understanding of Torah's metaphors, I am asked in a time of turmoil and fear and hatred to take time out to remove myself at times from the engagement with that external conflicts and go inside and really look first or in part, because there are three levels. Examine these three levels in myself. The um, bottom level, it's in toward the animal level, but it's the primitive, most instinctual, the part of us that responds automatically without thought with craving and with fear. So to really look at the part of me that wants what she wants when she wants it, 
that gets furious when she doesn't get what she wants when she wants it, and that sometimes simply wants to get into bed, put the covers over her head, and stay there until it all goes away by itself, but not engage. Okay, so it's fear and it's wanting both very much there. And I need to really look at that if I'm going to make changes in myself. I also need to look second level at the aspects of myself that really are human, that are allowing me to look this way. The capacity to discern, to create, to take a deep breath before I react. Hang on a second, it's my son. Great. Eric, I can't. I can call you back in about a half hour if you still have everything. Okay. The part of me that can discern my own failures to hit the mark and my successes and work with all of the creativity and intelligence that I have to change. And then at the third level is the part of me that yearns to connect to the divine, that can feel that there is some possibility of connection that feels the glory of God when I'm outdoors, all of that. Um, that's the part of looking inward to make the potential for changes. In um, Because only in knowing myself can I really have the capacity to make those choices and do what Torah wants of me, to love my neighbor or the stranger. As uh, Shahel just said recently, that love, the way he sees it, to offer both my neighbor and the stranger the same protection and fairness and equity that I want for myself. And to choose behaviors that take me in that direction. In a slightly different understanding of the metaphor, the three levels point us toward what supports us um, externally in making these behavioral changes. So the first is that lower, very physical level of being outdoors in the natural world and actually absorbing that glory, that interconnectedness, just what it means to us in that when we're outside. Um, the second is in the capacity um, and choice to have relationships with other human beings, with all of the um, caring, and support and friendship and love that that involves, which changes us toward the good. And the third level is again, where I reach for connections with the divine spirit. However, I do that for that cling, cleaving to, clinging to, so that I can hear in my head which way I'm supposed to go when there's a choice point. Torah is part of that, studying Torah is part of that. So Noah's Ark is called a Teva, the same word that's used for the basket that Moa is placed in when he's put into the river at the very beginning of Exodus. And if we take that term seriously as a metaphor for self-examination and behavioral change, it offers the promise of freedom from our own narrowness um, and enslavement to our small selves, what the Torah calls Mitzrayim. It's the same story as Moses in Exodus. Um, for then we can make the changes Torah wants of us and, of, and our society. In the famous quote from Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you, Gail.